Welcome back to another day here on the Lord Kind of Pixel Boy and Client. This might be the last time I use this intro because today, as I'm recording this, today is my last day of having to open and close at the shop. Today we're running one of the top four decks of the 8K tournament. Now, I know the first place deck, I know the second place deck, but when it comes to place three and four, it doesn't say, they just say that the, both those decks are the top four. So I don't know if this came in third or if this came in fourth. It doesn't really matter, it's top four deck. This deck is Aggro A. F. We are running Maleficence. We are running Pinocchios, Mr. Smeeze, Arthurs, uh, Bodyguards to protect them, Sneaky Goats to close games. Our non-character package is relatively small. Befuddles, Friends on the Other Side, Strength of a Raging Fire, and the Sorcerer's Spell Book. A one of, mind you. It's a one of. So you get this guy, you use it, or you get rid of this guy, and you never see it again. Strength is... Strength should be pretty good in this deck, considering how cheap our characters are. It should be easy to go wide. However, uh, everyone in the grandma's playing steel, so going wide just means you lose to swords. <laughs> so that's a little risky. But top four deck aggro, there's not much to say. I expect the games to be around five minutes long with some maybe some anomalies on either side. Uh, but let's jump in. Let's see, we can't win a few. Before you go, there are new challenger tournaments coming up. Uh, one in Georgia, one in Chicago, one in Texas, one in Vegas, and one in Seattle. That's five tournaments. And this guy wants to go to them. I want to go to as many as I can. I can't go to Texas because my student, my second son will be born in that time frame of those days. But the other four, I'd love to go to them. So I have set up a link down below, a link called Coffee, C-O-F-I. It is a site for uh, you guys effectively can leave tips. If you leave tips on the channel, what I'm going to do for you guys, everyone who leaves a tip is going to get a special raffle. I have another booster box to give away. And on top of that, my goal is to raise money for pay for flights, to pay for hotels, to pay for missing cards that I still need for my decks that I want to run for them. Effectively, a sponsorship to get myself into each and every one of the tournaments, except the Texas one, which I would love to go to, but for obvious reasons, I can't go to that one. Link down below. Donate as much as you want or as little as you want. Uh, every every penny every every penny matters. It's all important. But I will say, if you guys donate and it's not enough to reach the threshold, whatever that threshold may be, I honestly do not know how much I would need. I know it's going to be a lot. Tickets are expensive for the for the flight. Hotels are expensive. And then there's multiple. There's four of them that I want to go to. I, I know it could be a lot. If I do not raise enough money to attend them, I will use that money, all of that money, specifically to turn around and buy more Lorcana swag for you guys specifically and you guys who donate will be exclusively a part of that raffle there's a link down below help send me to the challenger events and i hope to see you there okay here we go sapphire ruby you know what it's better than the emerald steel i've been playing all morning <laughs> uh the rabbits are nice but where's my ink you know, I need ink. Turn one, turn two. This is unprotected. Keeping the Olaf's for ink. Aha. Snake's really good. God, I got a rabbit back. I literally put this rabbit away and redrew it. Maui. Is this, uh, I've seen a red blue deck recently that ran a Maui, of, especially the whale. Is that like a thing now? A Maui variant of this deck? Because I didn't find it that impressive. Say a lot to my little friend. She's biding her time and very upset. Yes, develop that brain. What are the odds that they're using that to go find another car to just ink? All right, card went to the very end. Are they going to ink it? That'd be hilarious. Oh, Fishhook. Okay. Yeah, Fishhook's not going to do you any good in this matchup. Rush, 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 rush. They could play Little Queen. There could be a Rush character. How much do I play around that? Turn three, they want to do uh, Fishbone will most likely 
Just trying to decide if I need to bounce my Maleficent for a snake. I don't think so. The yes, they likely run queen, and there's a good chance I'm going to lose Maleficent right here. That will feel pretty bad because Mr. Speed can't quest then. Or attack. He just effectively trades with a little queen. Alright. I know they want to play a fishbone if they have it. Man, it feels so good to be me sometimes. Alright, can I get a bodyguard off the top? I'd love to see a prince. Hercules would be sweet too. No? Nothing? None of it? Sure. Cool, 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 cool. Alright, we'll bounce the Maleficent. Replay Maleficent. Fast turn. Opponent's building up to a board wipe. That's surely a thing. What, you got some kind of removal for Mr. Smee? You got the queen we were talking about? <laughs> well, let's see it, opponent. What do you got? You know, the longer my opponent takes, the more I have to edit. That's usually what it comes down to. They take a long time to uh, make their play. I usually just sit here in silence and wait for it. Then I have to go back and edit that out. I think that's part of the editing process. I try to cut out big gaps of like, I'm not talking, nothing's being played. Like, it's just boring, right? There's literally nothing going on. So when my opponent sits here and does nothing, it makes more editing for me to do. <laughs> well, they got rid of a teeth and ambitions. So they are they genuinely struggling to just have a character? All right, there's a character. I mean, they were ramping hard. Maybe perhaps they were just ramping hard for Gaston here. I can't play a character and sing this. Hmm. This might just be pretty useless, right? Because if they don't have a board wipe, they're going to attack. Hmm. That's tough. That is tough. I'm definitely going to play a rabbit, though. Trading this for two cards. Seems strong. And we're continuing to quest. Can't fear the board wipe. Alright, opponent, keep inking. <laughs> Continue to empty thy hand. Well, that's not emptying your hand. That's just filtering. You got a Flaversham? What do you got, opponent? They don't attack. I go to 18 on my turn. All right, continuing to fishbone. That's my biggest hurdle with fishbone is I always I like every card in my hand almost all the time, and it's never like, oh, that's an easy ink. I think that Gaston's gonna want to attack. If it doesn't, I have a good strength now. I think I'll just pay for it. Because I still do fear the board wipe. Hmm. Does Mr. Smee run into Gaston? Since it's going to die anyway. And then it will trade with anything it decides to attack. Uh, it should probably quest. Okay, we'll just take out one of these guys. Still just playing around the board wipe here. Hmm. The Arthur's tough. I don't know if it survives. They take out Maleficent. That way I don't just win. So I need a way of gaining another lore. I mean, a goat off the top would be sweet.
But I'm pretty much, depending on what they get to do here, I'm pretty much in uh, kill my character or lose the game mode. The trick will be getting double characters down to get around Lady Tremaine's and Madame Medusa's. Has to take out Maleficent. Unless they have more removal, which they could have. Right, it takes out a like a Merlin, for example, and then it teeths. Uh, no. So it takes out a Madame Mim, so I don't get the card draw. There's no way for it to survive if they're going to use a teeth. And teeth doesn't take out the other two characters. Only takes down a Maleficent. But that's also the one that Gaston would prefer to attack. Perhaps take- I think taking out Gaston actually might have been a mistake. Maybe I should should have committed an Arthur to the board. I mean, we saw they had one teeth, so it's possible they'd have two teeth to take out an Arthur. But yeah, that's probably was the mistake. Now I'm gonna force my opponent into board wipes. Here's the question. Do I just draw cards and look for a goat? Oh, <laughs> uh, let's do Maleficent. It draws cards. Oh, there's the goat. <laughs> Alright. Well, Merlin could have sang the friends and I would have been only at 18. So goat would technically be lethal, but it would have to die first. Or die second, technically. Come down and then die. All I'm trying to say is I couldn't close the game that turn. But I think if I knew Goat was on top, I would have sang with friends, played the Goat, and just pretty much no matter what happens, they're dead. They would have to just win the game by lore at that point. Because Merlin is a leaves trigger, and that is the most broken kind of trigger that we've come to discover. Not a ban- Banish trigger is good. Banish trigger, actually, there's a way to combat it. A leaf trigger? There's no way to combat it. It's guaranteed to happen. Alright, opponent needs a board wipe. I'm gonna be sad if they don't have their board wipe because I do all this effort to get a goat <laughs> to be like, ha! I got you anyway. <laughs> what do you think, opponent? Quest with Gaston play the board wipe because that would be so cool. No, they're just gonna let the timer run out. Well, at least they didn't let the timer run out. Emerald Steel again. Wow. I have a lot of Emerald Steel this morning. Go first. Mm, bodyguard's really good. No turn one plays. I don't like that so much. I think the Mr. Smee might actually be better than Pinocchio, but I like the options. Okay, well, this isn't great. No turn one play for me. That's really not great for an aggro deck. <laughs> I think my turn two might be a Mr. Smee, turn three Maleficent. Giving up all my goats. Alright, what do you think? What are you thinking? Don't play Ursula now. I mean, they should definitely play Ursula. A Baboom? It's actually a pretty good card against Mr. Smee, because it pretty much locks him out of doing anything for the rest of this game. Except for one quest, for one attack. Ooh, a Prince! Got a lot of discarding to do. I'll probably discard a Pinocchio. Depends on what we draw here. Yeah, I'm gonna discard a Pinocchio. I hate to do it! But, if I can use Mr. Smee to keep the board clear... This isn't the kind of game that this deck wants to play. We don't want to play keep their board under control. I think that's a game we often lose. 
Yeah, see, ba boom. Yeah. Surprised they didn't just play it. Man, I am just drawing just the same cards over and over. Wow, I, I've only seen like four different cards this whole game. <laughs> Definitely play the bodyguard here, because Big Robin Hood can't defeat it. Mr. Shmee down, pass the turn. And to be clear, Big Robin Hood can't defeat the prince in one attack. <laughs> They're gonna have a double song. That's gonna be really bad for me. It almost doesn't matter what the song is, it will be bad for me. Mm, trade the Maleficent with that. Probably. Play the Fox, take out the other one. Or Maleficent takes down Flynn. And then the Fox comes down and takes down Robin Hood. And then the Prince quests. Oh, yeah. Let's get rid of too late to cancel. I should sing with the prince actually and draw cards first. Let's get rid of a Shmi. Let's draw some more cards. Ooh, the strength is good, but I can't afford to get a character down and play it. Either way, I'd, I mean, yeah. If I would have waited on attacking, I could have taken out Ursula. Dang, dang, dang. Alright, let's we'll stick to the original plan. Fox, bounce Maleficent. Take out the Robin Hood. Still have a double song to sing. Man, I've still, I mean, apart from the strength of the Raging Fire, <laughs> like, my hand is largely unchanged. It's just been the same, like, four or five cards the whole game. Alright, here's the double song, I just don't know what they're singing. Double string. Well, it lets him draw two cards. That is not the worst thing. Alright, I can defeat the Ursula next turn. Right, I could attack it, play another character, play Strength of a Raging Fire. What do you just make me discard? Oh, the character with the most cards discards. Oh, let's get rid of. Get rid of Maleficent. I think I'd rather have two bodyguards with resist down. There's my ink. It's also a cheap card. So the prince has to attack to make this work, right? Or that prince could sing. Play a prince, play an Olaf, sing the strength, get rid of the Ursula. Yeah, let's do that. Ursula has to go. You let them get too much advantage out of it and they pretty much get a run away with the game. Oh, they snagged my last card. There's only seven songs in the deck and I have way less than that going on in my hand or going on in the deck at this point. Gotta do both to the same character. Oh, it's just one. That's right. Because we dealt with Ursula. Ha! We're so good. The Friar Tuck can now take down the Prince if it wants. I think they should just be questing. They already have a lead. I do like this. That lets me heal my Prince. Can't replay him to the board this turn, but still pretty good. Alright, I think our top deck potential against our opponent is a lot weaker. Especially if we have to play the catch-up game. Makes you wonder how this game would have gone if I was like, if I played more into like the Mr. Smees. Yeah, 
Yep, deal with that Madam Mim. Man, opponent's just been rocking this removal. All right. All you can do is ink the last card, right? They're on plus three. I'm on plus seven. So I have a better race. Just depends on what they're top decking here. Like a Tinkerbell would be devastating. Pretty much be a game winning card for them. All right. There are they thinking about attacking with Benja? It's three turns to defeat a single prince. Well, two turns because you got two Benjas now. Three turns for the other prince. That's still two turns for the other prince. But those are consecutive, not congruent. Yeah, you should just be questing. Because you have I'm sure your deck has a lot of outs. Just straight removal. Uh card draw. Just a bunch of stuff, I'm sure. Like I said, Tinkerbell is pretty much game over. The swords would be bad. Especially now that both my princes are tapped. I'd still get one more play out of my princes. Uh, maybe swords isn't that bad. Olaf's would survive. Princes would survive. One would die to a double Benja attack. But I would still have four quests on the board. I know I've already inked two goats. But the deck has four goats, so... Even a swords. I can still top deck a goat for the, for the win. Otherwise, I think I'm just questing and winning right now. Yep, don't even need to quest, the opponent knows. Hmm, Emerald Steel. Discard? Perhaps, we will see. Okay, cool, 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 I have a, uh, Maleficent into a snake. Actually, I'll keep it, it's a great hand. I will ink the Olaf. Yeah, okay, cool. What do we got? Zot Gaming. A Wildcat Evasive. And a Robin Hood. Of course a Robin Hood. They don't need to know I just drew an Olaf because they can actually, you can see where they pull their cards from. Fast turn. Ink and a big Robin Hood. So they have a second big Robin Hood in their hand. No songs for you. There are songs in the deck, but there's no songs for you. Oh, a befuddle, huh? Oh, interesting. Do I waste my time hitting that Robin Hood? Delaying it? And then I have to play my other one, drop Olaf, and then I'm not questing. Oh, interesting. Okay. The befuddle is actually really good. Because we saw them ink a Robin Hood, so they definitely have another Robin Hood, right? Right, and then they probably have a song to sing with it. Let's ink. Let's ink the snake. Bounce the Robin Hood. Let's get Olaf in play. Let's pass the turn. And we'll say greetings to the opponent like they said to us. Nailed it. So easy. Ink in the Robin Hood. <laughs> Playing a Robin Hood. Alright, Robin Hood's not strong enough to defeat a prince in a single attack. Ooh, I like the Hercules. I don't have a big Hercules in the deck, though. Let's go ahead and put you down. Let's play a bodyguard in the bodyguard position. All right, let's not be surprised to see a shift Robin Hood sing a song here. Question is, what are they singing? I like it. Hmm, they're definitely planning on singing something, right? Or playing a song to deal with the prince. So I play another prince. I almost feel like I do play another prince here. But I also want to play a Maleficent. Hmm. 
Let's go Maleficent. Get some more cards. Ink. Gotta be careful of their uh, sword, so I'm not gonna throw another Chernobog into it. I suspect there's something going on here. It's gonna get rid of the prince, and then they're gonna take out the other two characters. Just not sure what. That's a lot of Robin Hoods they dealt with this game. A beast. Okay, a beast doesn't do it. Alright, well, beast might draw them into what they're looking for. Which would be no bueno for me, but I'm gonna try just going for it. Yeah, like a swords right now would just be devastating. We pretty much lose on the spot to a swords. Ah, oh, yep, I jinxed it. Pretty much lose on the spot to a swords. Robin Hood takes out the prince now. Ursula takes out Olaf. And then they still have five ink to spend on stuff. And I have a card in my hand I can't play. That I can play. And it goes well with my fox. I have a very tight... Very tight play here. Very tight play time. These all just quest for just a whole bunch. That Ursula sings any bounce songs. Yeah, we're pretty much dead to that too. I'm on plus nine. Uh, Befuddle pretty much only works on Ursula here. Another rabbit. Let's see, it only quests for three. So I'm gonna need to be able to play a rabbit and something else to even have a shot. I think if they just quest, I just physically don't have the time to catch up. Ah, there goes both rabbits. Right, Ursula. Wasn't even paying attention to it being sung by Ursula. <laughs> ah, Tinkerbell! Again, they don't need to play all this stuff. I think just them questing was lethal. Not this turn, but it was the nail in the coffin. There's a goat. I have no way of bouncing goat back to hand. Man, I have no way of bouncing goat back to hand. That is close. And now they just quest. Yeah, this, I jinxed myself. I shouldn't have said anything about the swords. <laughs> like, oh yeah, we're dead to a swords here. Oh, of course, swords. <laughs> Steel song. Let me guess, going second? Why would I go first against one of the top tier debts? <laughs> uh, I got a turn one. I do not have a turn two. This is a awfully slow hand. I do like the idea of Arthur and Rabbit here just going off. Alright, let's look for a two drop. Okay, wow. Okay, I'll take it. Now I really wish I had a fox. You know? That does change my turn one play. They're gonna get a Pluto down. I am gonna get a Chernobog's follower. They likely have a Simba. They inked a Simba. So Pluto's probably gonna be protected. But it does change my turn one play. If it's anything other than a bodyguard, Pluto is... pretty much can't do anything. 
That's two Simbas gone. There's no way that they don't have a third one, right? Or at least another bodyguard? Who else would be a bodyguard on three? Ah, uh, Kida. Of course, Kida. The new bodyguard. Of course, that's why I'm not thinking about it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's mean, and I love it. Goodbye, Kida. Goodbye, Pluto. Well, that was savage. Hmm, a timely befuddle feels really good. But also, befuddle is almost never timely. <laughs> Little John, what do you do? No, just a bodyguard? Bodyguard who occasionally has evasive. Okay. Uh, well, that's unfortunate. I have to ink the friends. Because everything else is uninkable in my hand. A bodyguard prince. I can do it too. No, I'll keep a turn of bug. Yashua sweet All right, we are playing against the steel song, so let's be careful for a uh, swords This is a bodyguard deck are they gonna have the musketeer tabard thing for card draw So far we've seen Yeah, that doesn't do anything. We've seen two Simbas, Akita, a little John and a Joshua sweet What do they all have in common? They are all bodyguards you know what bodyguards don't do in a deck filled with bodyguards? They don't have the bodyguard mechanic. <laughs> uh, hmm. I can just pump out a lot of power here. But also Arthur represents a lot of power too. All right, let's get Arthur rolling along. Arthur really hasn't had his day in the sun in a long time. I'm actually kind of surprised to see him included in a top four deck. I think it's the unink ability. It costs three in a deck that largely wants to be aggressive, so three is actually a really high uh, price point for characters. Let's see, if I get an ink next turn, I think I do play Rabbit and then bounce Rabbit just for the card draw. Just want to have a full hand for when a swords comes down. A deck filled with bodyguards doesn't have bodyguard. <laughs> well, you can do two points of damage to the prince, but that is it. Arthur may be bouncing prince just to heal him. Still takes three damage on the following turn. Man, that is a lot of no ink. We're gonna bounce the Maleficent, but we're bouncing Maleficent for swords, right? It's either that or Chernabog. All right, did they got it? Do you have a swords? No swords for the opponent. Game over. This is what I expected. Just for their games to be fairly short. It's Ten seconds till six minutes in, and the game's over. Not even at six minutes. Sapphire Amethyst, okay. Going first, I like to see it. You know, this is interesting. Mr. Smee. There's nothing in the deck that works with Mr. Smee. It's an interesting choice to not have any kind of captains. Um, I do like it, though. I like my turn one trades for something. 
trades for a card draw. Possibly also trades for a body with the two, two strength on it. All right, opponent. What style of deck are we playing? You got your own Chernabog's followers. A little aggressive. West, no card draw. Would love for it to trade with a Rafiki. And that's what I thought. A Poopsicle? Okay. Opponent's just going for like the ultra hardcore draw card version. Another Rafiki. Will you trade? Heck yeah. I'll take that all day. I think I'm going to go Bodyguard here. If they have their own Fox, it won't be so great. But, the Prince defeats Rafiki. Right, Rafiki attacks it. Does not kill the Prince, puts one damage on Rafiki. The Prince can then attack Rafiki to defeat it. Of course, they'll likely attack and then bounce. Depending on how they do it, I may end up bouncing the Prince to get some damage off of him. Alright, they spent all their resources on that, so Rafiki's likely not attacking. Okay, I'll take it. Poopsicle for the heal. No Poopsicle for the heal. Do I bounce the prince? Do I play two Mr. Smees? Do I ink a Smee and play a rabbit? The world may never know! <laughs> Thinking about bouncing this prince. But, let's do it the other way. Let's draw some cards. Fuddle, interesting. It's likely ink, but we will see. What do you think, opponent? You gonna be aggressive? We're gonna see a one drop followed by a fox? We're gonna see a queen's castle. And that's your entire turn, huh? Interesting. Alright, let's give up a befuddle. Uh, let's start with Maleficent. She draws a card. Got me some more ink. Fantastic. Alright, I'm on plus nine now. Let's see what the opponents got. I have a suspicion that these games are gonna go relatively quickly. We're only at the four and a half minute mark right now. That Prince putting in some work. Let it go, probably on the Pinocchio. That's the biggest way to slow me down. Then I only gain six. Oh. Now I gain seven and it's lethal. That was a misplay, so now I just quest and win. Well, that was a misplay from the opponent. Emerald Steel. Orion 03. Hey, I gotta go first. Fantastic. Hmm. Passive lore. Oh, I don't like not having my, like, bounce stuff. There's only one spellbook in the whole deck. I think I'll take it, right? The removal. Spellbook could be the most difficult thing to deal with. And it's the only one. It's the only one I got. Alright, giving up the goat. I'm gonna hold on to this befuddle for a Robin Hood. I think that's the best place for it. Or even to bounce. Eh, that's bounceable. 
it's bounceable, but do I bounce it? That's the question. Hmm, Mr. Shmee? Yeah, it's definitely got to be Pinocchio, right? All right. Pinocchio it is. I'll hold on to the Chernobog's followers for now. There is some discard in the opponent's deck. No songs for you. There's only seven songs in the deck. Oh, a bodyguard. That's what I was hoping for. I didn't know I was going to get it, but... That's pretty sweet. Bodyguard. And no card draw. Not yet. Alright. Pinocchio outraces you. All day, every day. Alright, turn three. What do they play? The other Ursula? To be able to sing double songs? They inked one. Surely they have another. But boom to their own Ursula. Ah, yeah, the misclick. Misclick in the concession. Ah, oh, come on. Don't just concede when you make a mistake, guys. You can still come back from that. Okay, another steel song. Angel Undies. That name sounds familiar. Going second against Steel Song. Oh boy. Well, I do have a turn one play. Turn two into a couple of good turn three options. I also have a turn one into this turn two if things get hairy. And I'm going second. I like it. The only one that's going to be questionable or difficult to get down is Pinocchio. So it's going to. Pinocchio is going to largely be based on how my opponent plays their opening turns. He may just get stuck in my hand. It's not my turn. They can't distract me with the emoji. A Cindy Lou Who? In Steel Song, you say? Do I just immediately befuddle bounce that? Yeah, I'm gonna just immediately befuddle bounce that. I ain't gonna give you a target to just get a let the storm rage on nonsense and draw a card and develop your board. This is looking an awful lot so far like uh, the number one deck. Double Pinocchios is terrifying, actually. Alright, Mr. Smee survives the song singing. And still has the power to take out Cinderella. I mean, it's a trade, but it's a two-for-one trade. Why not lose two cards? But then they gain back a card, so I guess it's net neutral one-for-one. One, since the one replaces itself. And then along came Zeus. Oh, no. All right, well, they're definitely going to do that. I can't get down another character and get a snake down. I would need a one drop for that. If they're gonna do a long came Zeus. I'm gonna need to quest with Mr. Smee. The only other thing I could think of is give him a more tempting target with my Prince bodyguard. Since this can be much more difficult to remove. Alternatively, I quest with Smee, I play Snake, and then they have to use it on Snake, and I still have a Mr. Smee. Ah, uh, Snake's just better, isn't it? It's harder to get down, but it is better. Ah, uh, I shouldn't have quested. Let the Storm Rage on now works on Mr. Smee, and then Zeus can be sung by the other one for the Prince, and then they still have four ink to play stuff. I think I just walked myself into a really, really bad position. <laughs> There's the Zeus. Takes out the Prince. And the sister. Yeah, I just walked myself into an auto defeat, I think. I think I just lost this game. I saw it too late. I always see it after I make the mistake.
Hmm. Yeah, there's pretty much nothing I can do at this point except try to be the aggressor. I know this deck. I just played it the other day. It's just, it's filled with removal. This deck does not stand a chance against it. Like, it's impressive. Like, yeah, this deck made it to the top four. But I think if this, if these two decks faced off a hundred times, this deck maybe wins, maybe wins 10% of the time. Well, you got one card. That's the only other upside of this deck, because I don't have a lot of songs to steal on our opponent. And a lot of opponents are playing song stealers. Don't the characters are still... Okay, dang it. Well, I can still get rid of an aerial. No, I can't. My two drops are bouncers. Dang it. <laughs> All right. We lose this game. We lose this game hard. Nine times out of ten. We always lose this game. <laughs>